I had a toxic relationship with competition. I once did a step challenge with a friend where I took 34,000 steps a day for three weeks with the main intent of crushing him. I wanted to steal his soul. Shout out to David Goggin for the concept of stealing souls. I did a body transformation challenge with some of my roommates where I was so focused on me, me, me that I didn't offer them any help or support even though I knew that I'd be able to help them with their overall health. My motivations were always so selfish. It even went to the extreme, though I'm ashamed to admit it now, where sometimes I wish that my competitors would fail just so that I'd be able to win the challenge instead of me just focusing on doing the best that I possibly could. Until this one. Hey there friends, I'm Matt, a joyful human who's working to live life on purpose. On this channel, we discuss how to live life more purposefully, mindfully, and effectively. For three days, I abstained from social media with two of my friends, Izzy and Ruri. This challenge taught me not only about the ways that I spend my time, but more importantly, it gave me some lessons and perspective on friendship. You can go check out Izzy and Brewery's experiences on their channels. Links are in the video description. There were two main reasons for our challenge. The first was to stop wasting so much time on social media. Whenever we all checked our screen time before the challenge started, it was pretty astounding how much of our lives we were really wasting just scrolling through the content. And then the second part was to be able to take that time that we are spending on social media and replace it. Replace it with projects or initiatives, spend it in ways that really moved our lives forward, maybe even provided value to other people. Therefore, we set out some simple rules and challenges. First, we defined social media, and we did this based on the areas where we were collectively spending the most time. Social media for us meant Instagram, YouTube, YouTube Studio, Reddit, Twitter, TikTok, and manga. Apparently, Ruri reads a lot of manga. Second, we set out the goals for what we wanted to do. Here's a list for each of us. They were a mix of daily tasks and overall tasks to be done over the three days. They also had points associated with them in order to gamify the experience a little bit more. Lastly, we made a punishment, of course. For every minute that you were on social media, you had to go out and you had to run a kilometer. That part was quite fun. I went into the challenge with the main intention of winning. I wanted the most points. I wanted to be able to say that I did all my tasks. I essentially wanted to flex that I was a productive person, whatever that means. It was so driven by ego. Thankfully though, at the end, ego, winning, those were far from my main motivation. As I'm a pretty routine-based person, each of the three days of the challenge looked essentially the same, even though I was in Oaxaca, Mexico at the time, attempting to learn Spanish. Since Ruri and Izzy were eight and six hours ahead of me respectively just due to time differences, I woke up each morning before dawn motivated to get my day started, motivated to play some catch up. I knew that they were going to be making videos, studying, reading, meditating, exercising, all sorts of productive stuff while I was still snoozing in bed. So that was a nice motivation to be able to get up and at it even whenever I really didn't feel like it. That's one of the superpowers of doing these sorts of things with friends. Typically I aim to make working out one of the first things that I do every single morning. The reason for that is that I haven't found anything that is nearly as effective at adding this energy and more importantly, this hope to my day whenever I'm starting off. However, since it wasn't a part of my challenge list, I didn't do that for those three days and omitting it is going to be something that I talk a little bit more about later. Instead, I woke up, I did some meditation, I did some journaling, and I did what I call my brain dump in Rome research. Meditating may or may not have been a reason for me to be able to remain horizontal in my bed for a little bit longer, but I do promise that I was awake during that time. Especially on days one and two, I found myself reaching for my phone a lot over the course of the morning. That was a sign to me that I was a lot more attached, maybe a lot more addicted to my phone and to the apps that I really wanted to be able to recognize. Going into the challenge, I really was averse to this word addicted. And maybe addicted is too strong of a connotation. I don't know what a true addiction is, but I can't deny that I was so attached and that I was naturally reacting, naturally wanting to be able to go to those as a distraction from my day-to-day -day life. Anytime something got a little bit uncomfortable, I wanted to reach to it. I wanted my brain to be able to escape to that, to the dopamine effect. So that was a big signifier. That was a big lesson that I learned those first few days. By that time in the trip, I had already found a cafe that I loved and I worked at every single day. And I mean every single day. So after the morning routine, I packed up my bag and I started walking over there. It was about a 20 minute walk, so I wanted to be able to get there before we started our morning Zoom calls. Those daily Zoom check-ins were one of the biggest surprise benefits of this challenge. Every single time, no matter how good or how bad I was feeling, I came out feeling so energized. There was this certain energy being able to talk to both Ruri and Izzy, where we were really encouraging one another, where it was great to be able to check in. That was the intent to be able to see, okay, how's everybody doing with the challenge? What struggles are you having? Things like that. But so often it would just go into a bunch of laughing and just having a great time, just friends being able to talk to each other every single day. It was a pretty cool thing. As fun as those meetings were, they did have to end because we had other things to go on during the day. For me personally, I have a full-time job, so I had to make sure that all of these different challenge items were being done outside of that schedule or around that schedule, I should say, because I definitely don't want to get fired. 
Whenever I did start on my challenge items though, I would always start with the scripting in my videos. The reason for that is that it was the most difficult thing for me. I wanted to make sure that the earlier in the day, whenever I had the most praying power, that I had the most creativity, I was working on that item. Truth be told, in the past, I would not have done that. Usually, if I wanted to be productive or if I wanted to be effective, I would choose something that I deemed effective but maybe was a little bit easier. For me, that's reading because I realized when I started creating how much easier it is to consume something versus actually create something myself. But I had this video script, and if you compare the amount of time that it took me to do video scripts before the challenge compared to after, it's absolutely insane. Before, I would take days, even weeks, perfecting the script. Even though nothing can actually be perfect, I was really just procrastinating, and I would just keep putting it off and off and off because there was no deadline. However, the moment that we introduced a deadline, the moment that I had that idea where I need to finish it today, it was amazing how fast I was able to write. I like to reference Parkinson's law, this idea of the amount of work is going to stretch to the amount of time allotted for its completion. And since I shrunk that time, I was able to get so much more done. This is a really cool lesson that I've started applying since that challenge to be able to have all of my work have deadlines because without it, it can be too easy to just say, ah, just a little bit more, just a little bit more instead of just putting it out and moving on to the next thing. As I finished up the video script each day though, work was calling, so I had to make sure that I got back to work. That took up the majority of the rest of my day. After work finished though, I would get to my Spanish lesson. And this is where I actually have a confession to make about some of my other challenge items, specifically the ones to do with language. So while it may look impressive, maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm just hyping this up for no reason at all, that I had an hour of Tagalog study and an hour of Spanish study on there, I wanted to have a little bit of a caveat. The Spanish study was already pretty much guaranteed. It would have been harder for me not to do it than to actually do it because for each of the days of the challenge, I had already had a two and a half hour lesson that was on the books. So I would have had to cancel that lesson in order to not get those points. And when it came to Tagalog, I wasn't really that strict in the way that I defined studying. So if there was one day where I did the traditional studying where I would go and I would make flashcards and I would make sure to go and study those. But on another day, I just talked to my parents for an hour. And on another one, I just watched a movie. So with those, that taught me a little bit of a lesson about going to the rules of the game as opposed to maybe the spirit of it. And what I mean by that is I was so focused on winning the game and coming off as impressive in a way that I wasn't really as focused on the effectiveness. Those weren't the most effective way, or at least the Tagalog was not the most effective way for me to be able to study, but it got me the point. And that's where, what's the focus? Is the focus supposed to be these small little competitions or should it be the bigger parts of life? So those are some questions I was really asking myself afterwards. After my Spanish lesson every day, I would walk towards my Airbnb, go pick up some fresh water from this lovely old lady who owned a shop that was nearby. I would go study my Tagalog, do a few miscellaneous tasks, and I would be out to bed. As I said before, the second two days after this initial first day were largely the same. Wake up, morning routine, do the Zoom call, work, make some stuff, study Spanish, buy water, study Tagalog, and sleep. Interspersed in there, I also reread one of my favorite books, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and I wrote my first blog post, which I posted onto my website. But to go into more detail about these days would be a waste of your time and mine, so let's take a different route. What I like to call the punchline. What did I really learn from this? Well, I think that there's two main lessons that I was able to get from this whole experience. The first thing is that sprints are easy. What's actually more difficult is to create a long-term sustainable plan, a sustainable system to be able to create over the years. This was just three days. Three days I was able to get through with brute force. Even though I feel as though I was able to get a lot more finished in these three days compared to other days, the way that I did it is not something that would work out in the long term. I don't even think it would work out for a week, granted a month or even longer than that. And the reason for that is that I didn't do many of the things that weren't on my list. I hardly did anything that weren't on the list of things to check off. I mentioned before that I didn't work out. I also didn't eat particularly well. I didn't connect with friends outside of Ruri and Izzy, which yes, it made me closer to the both of them, but there were also other relationships that I want to keep up in life. And it was so, so restrictive. My focus was only on those things. So these sprints, maybe they are useful and maybe I'll be able to implement them in future ways, but the way in which we did it, it was so extreme. It was so much that yes, there's short-term benefit, but at the cost of a long-term play. So that was a big lesson to be able to learn that these little fixes, they're not gonna be the thing that solve everything. Maybe they can build momentum, but they have to be done mindfully, at least from my experience. And the second thing is actually so much more profound or so much more important for my life. 
and that is that it doesn't matter if you win if you're not sharing those experiences with others. As I mentioned at the very start, I had a truly toxic relationship with competition. It was solely about me, me, me. I just wanted to win. It didn't really matter the cost. And I pretty much expected that I was also going to be bringing other people down because that's just the experience that I had in the past. It was something where we were talking crap with one another. It wasn't very much encouragement. It was those little slights, those little jabs. But this was so different. This was truly a beautiful experience because winning's great and all, but you know what's so much more beautiful? Friendship. That sounds so cheesy, but that's honestly how I feel about this. The way in which we were able to support one another, I personally think we all got more finished than what we would have been able to do alone. I can say for a fact that those two inspired me to be able to be my best self. Because I want my life to be meaningful, I want to create things, I want to achieve things, but I never want to do those things, I never want to have all that at the expense of human relationships. Those mean way too much to me. So this has reshaped the way that I view these sorts of competitions. They're not even competitions with one another, they're more competitions with ourselves, where we're actually helping one another to become our best selves. Because another person failing, that doesn't actually bring me up. Sure, maybe it does on some arbitrary leaderboard or something like that, but in the grand scheme of life, it doesn't. Instead, I'd rather work to be able to help my friends, to help my family, whomever I'm with, to be able to become our best selves, because really, I think that's how the world becomes a much better place. So is this toxic relationship that I had with competition completely gone? Well, the answer is no. At the level where I was, three days in one competition are not enough to completely get rid of it. I can still hear that little voice inside. It's like a little demon who's telling me, be better than everyone else, be better than everyone else. It's quite awful, but I'm working to get rid of him there. But this challenge did so much to advance me forward. So much love and thanks to Izzy and Ruri for being my companions on this journey. Thanks so much for the support that you gave all the time. Thanks so much for just being there. You inspired me to really be my best self. So if you do want to, please go check out their videos of their experience of this challenge because each of them have unique takes. They have unique views that they were able to take away from our challenge. If this sort of content vibes with you, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button for more so that we can continue this journey together. You can expect more of these challenges or collaborations with Izzy and Brewery because this was far too much fun for it to only be a one-time thing. I'm sending you so much love today, my friends. I hope that today you have the best day ever. Bye now.